hope that you're joining us in North America because we start the evening session with a race in the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup between crews from the USA and from Canada. On the Berkshire side, it is Shawnigan Lake School, Canada. And on Bucks, Bellin Jesuit Preparatory School, USA. In their first ever appearance at the uh, Henley Royal Regatta. Shawnigan Lake School, Canada, were the uh, last overseas crew to win this in 2008. They reached the Friday of the event last year, 2014. And uh, they, the Canadians, are furthest from us, and so with uh, a marginal early advantage. Because it looks like both crews have got out to a pretty clean start there, and you can see that they're all dropping their oars in really nicely in time. It looks very crisp, it looks very clean, there's not much water being splashed up around, and that's usually a sign to a pretty good start. And as you can see there, Shawnigan Lake have really put in some hard strokes and have popped out to an early lead. You can see this racing through the eyes of a cox. What are your thought processes through these first 100, 200 metres? I think the main thing from a coxing point of view is to really make sure that you get off straight and you're not having to steer because every time you use your rudder, you are effectively breaking the boat. That's how the rudder works, it stops the boat. So that's not something you want to be doing in this fast, early part of the race. Mind you, my first ever race at Henley Royal, I was being warned within three strokes, so I obviously didn't do a terribly good job there myself. Well, the boys from uh, British Columbia, considered to be, I think, probably the strongest overseas entry in the uh, PE, the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup, are certainly living up to that billing in the early part of the uh, first evening race here against uh, Bell and Jesuit Preparatory School nearer to us, who've had a great season of podium finishes at various national and youth championships, including a first in the uh, lightweight men's eight at the Scholastic Rowing Association of America National Championship. There, there's his, uh, a lightweight specialism out of uh, Miami, Florida. But they are finding the uh, searing pace of their Canadian opponents a little hot to handle over the first quarter of the race. That's right, Peter. And Shawnigan Lake traditionally only come to Henley if they think they have a strong chance of winning. As you said, they are the last overseas crew to, to win this event in the PA for Schoolboy 8. So you know when they turn up that they're going to mean business. They're not going to be here for a little holiday. And they're certainly doing a great job here, stretching out to a pretty commanding lead now. We have gone beyond now the hottest part of the day. Doesn't feel like it where I'm sitting, but believe me, that is the case. The temperature here in the uh, United Kingdom is rumored to be, and there are various rumors flying around, rumored to be the hottest 1st of July on record which is uh, extraordinary, up above 30, 31, 32, 33 degrees C. There might be uh, meteorological experts disputing that, but it's, uh, it's a good line and it certainly paints, uh, it certainly paints a picture of uh, where we've been at today. And it asks a lot of these athletes. Yeah, and I think not only just on the water, but off the water as well, the boat tents where most of the crews store their equipment, store their boats, and have their sort of changing facilities and their showering facilities are going to be incredibly hot. You know, it's a big marquee, there's a lot of people in there, and that is going to be very uncomfortable. So they're not going to be able to get that much respite from the heat off the water, let alone on the water here out in the sun. Shot of the lake, stripped by uh, Joshua Gatka. With uh, Kevin Sutherland in the bow, now have, uh, what, a length, uh, length and a half, maybe, a little bit more than that, a degree of comfort in which they can, to some extent, luxuriate. There's a, a length in their stroke here which uh, suggests control. And indeed, they do have a, a grip on this race, which is going to be hard for the Americans to unshackle. This Canadian crew now, you can see a rating slightly lower than their American counterparts. That is, they're taking slightly fewer strokes per minute, which is usually a sign that they're comfortable in their lead and they're prepared to relax a little bit now. They're probably pretty confident that their opposition is not going to come back through them at this point in the race, and they look pretty happy to be where they are. 
course, the stronger crews, so you know all about this, are rowing not necessarily for today, but for tomorrow, <laughs> the day after that, and all the way through to Sunday. It's, uh, it's a week-long exercise. And conservation of energy and uh, keeping an ace or two close to their collective chest will count for something. Absolutely, these young men have another four days of racing ahead of them, especially if conditions continue like this. It's not going to be that easy to make sure they're really well hydrated and make sure they're well recovered. So there's, no, there's nothing for them here to, to spend any more than they need to. Best just to sit comfortably and let the opposition throw whatever they can at them, but just stay in comfortable control of the rest of the race. And now for those who are, individually speaking, fresh to this most singular of regattas. The special minutes, the special yards. Hard yards, yes, but made that much more tolerable and enjoyable as they pass the enclosures by the past ranks of uh, enthused and enthusiastic spectators who will vocally lift them. Sure, but in particular, of course, who are well used to being in front, to enjoying such moments, but to have such a good, clear view of their evidently vanquished opponents is in itself buoying, uplifting. And now to uh, treasure the ambience around them, to hear the noise and to feel the clear water and to relax into their moment of triumph. These are, these are moments to cherish. Across the Atlantic and along the Thames to a comfortable Wednesday win at the Henley Royal Regatta. Sheldon Lake School, Canada. Watch them carefully, be afraid. They're strong. They're still here on Thursday and probably beyond. Men of Jesuit Preparatory School, Follow them home.